All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's show. My name is Lori Ballin, and I have a real estate business here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We serve Las Vegas, North Las Vegas, Henderson, and even into Boulder City, Nevada. And my main source of leads is internet marketing. So I am a big um, SEO girl. I like to rank on the search engines. I drive a lot of traffic through social media, through real estate agent referrals online, and through uh, pay-per-click marketing, both um, regular paid search and paid social. And I am very, very passionate about lead generation. So passionate that I opened a marketing company called Ballon Brands, where we now build real estate agent websites and create blogs and real estate market reports, manage all that pay-per-click for agents. So I am now out there interviewing agents who are really rocking out a particular lead generation activity, a particular source. And today we are very fortunate to have Aaron Wittenstein on the call with us today from Westchester County, New York, who specializes in prospecting. Welcome to the show, Aaron. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right. So let me make sure I got these numbers correct because I'm I'm super impressed by this. And this is why I chose you for the call. So la last year, your real estate team um, closed about 50 units in New York. And um, and that's a that's a that's a load right there that you got. You were just telling me about your attorney state, which I find so fascinating. So it would be the equivalent of me doing 100 units out here, right? <laughs> in Vegas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, it's a challenge to say the least. So. Yeah, I've, I've never touched that, so I have no idea. But we had um, we had uh, um, Chris Suarez from Oregon in the other day, and he was talking to us about attorney states and um, him being from that area. So it's it's fascinating. All right, so so about half of your business last year came directly from cold call prospecting expired for sale by owner circle prospecting which we're going to go dive into and that equates to about four hundred thousand dollars in commission from that source do i have that about right yeah that's about right i would say a little more than 25 i'd say probably closer to like 30 or 32 but who's counting at this point so yeah that's incredible okay fantastic well hey you should be counting because that's what it's all about right <laughs> that's, that's how we scale is like is by counting all right, so Aaron, for our listeners, primary, uh, my listeners on this particular podcast and reading this blog are real estate agents. Now, some okay. of them are real estate agents that are, actually some of them don't even have their license yet, so we're gonna scare the heck out of them, right? And, um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and some of them are new and some of them are experienced and just looking to add another uh, lead generation leg to their, to their business, which is always great. So we're talking to kind of all three audiences from brand new to experienced. And uh, I like to give everybody as much as I can real deal strategies. If they want to be like you, these are the things that you do. So, so we're going we're gonna to talk in what you do and then as much that you can tell people specifically in advice is going to be fantastic. Okay. And I, do you still have, don't you have some sort of a coaching program or something for people who wanted to learn this? Do I have that right? Well, or? No, I, I do. I do expired mastery, which is um, a four part, uh, a four week course that we do, which is at expired mastery elite.com. And then we do group lead generation coaching as well, uh, which is a weekly call on Tuesdays at one to two fifteen, which I do with myself and my coach. That's at, it's called trajectory. So you can check that out at trajectory now.com. Okay. Um, fantastic. And and I will put links to those um, for anybody that wants more information. All right. So, Aaron, so what, first question is, um, how many days a week are you prospecting? Uh, five days a week. I mean, if it comes, I realistically, yeah, I'm at five days a week right now. I don't miss a day because I feel... How can I, I've been doing it. It's like ingrained in me over the last four years where if I don't do it, I feel like I didn't shower. Like I always tell people, <laughs> I can, yeah, it's bad. Like I, if I, um, it, I could go sell like 10 houses in one day, take 11 listings, but if I didn't lead generate, I just feel dirty. I just feel like I did something wrong. <laughs> That's a great start to this interview. I love it. Okay. <laughs> um, so if you don't lead generate, you feel dirty. Totally got, totally got that. I'm, I'm, I'm a very similar way. Although I can say I've never probably described it that way. Um, okay. <laughs> How many hours a day then are you committing to or is your goal for the day to make those calls? 
Well, on Mondays, um, I take my son to school in the morning, so I don't start till 8.30, and then I'll roll till about 11, so two and a half hours on Monday, and then Tuesday um, Tuesday through Friday, I do 8 to 11. That's unless something family-related or health gets in the way, so it's pretty much almost 15 hours a week is what I'm doing right now. There we go, 15 hours a week, okay. And in that 15 hours a week, do you have... Um, either averages or goals as to like how many contacts you're hoping to make or how many, how many appointments, what's your big goal? You go for appointments, I assume. I go for I, I go for appointments. You know, that's the main thing. And well, actually, I should say it's a combination of either appointments or leads. You know, I call them callbacks, someone that says call me back at some point down the road. So, you know, what I found is if I do 20 contacts, that should equal out to one appointment or four leads is what we should be looking at. And then every four leads should turn into one appointment eventually. Ah, gotcha. So 20 call. Okay, let's let's break that down. 20 calls. Are these actual? Um, I assume 20, that's not dialed. Contact. These are people that have no. on the phone. Okay. Yeah, 20 contacts. That's a that's a two-way real estate related conversation. That's not somebody who's, who hangs up the phone on me, tells me to forget off, you know, someone who, you know, our house already sold. That's not a two-way conversation. Okay. So out of 20 contacts that you actually speak with. Your goal is to turn one of those into an appointment or four of those into call me back leads. Exactly. Okay, perfect. Have you ever, do you know, um, are you using software, dial software? I use Season the Market. Okay. And does it track how many dials a day you're averaging? It does actually. Oh, there's a way to figure it out, but I'm going to wind up sitting here forever That's to right. do it. But it That's does. Okay. That's yeah, okay. It, it does. It does tell me how many dials I make. If you come up with that number, I I would love to know the average dials you make during those 15 hours because then I can actually uh, I'd know how many leads to the contact appointment. That's cool. the only one number I don't have in in the math. <laughs> all flow. So if you have it, if not, don't worry about it. Okay. So that's, that makes perfect sense that that's your goal. Um, one appointment or four leads. Now I'm going to assume that, well, based on your production numbers, you wouldn't be doing this unless you knew it was working. Where are you having the best luck, a uh, best luck? Luck's a bad word. Where are you having the best success? Is it for sale by owners, expired circle prospecting? It's a combination of both. Uh, I'm sorry, I expires and for sale by owners. I don't personally do circle prospecting okay. just because it's kind of like throwing a you know a needle in a haystack almost. So okay. not a bad idea, not not for me. So you're doing expired and for sale by owners? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Where are you getting the numbers to call those? Um, I use data from Vulcan 7 is where I get for sale by owners and expire. Yeah, for sale by owners and expireds. And I also use another program for FISBOHotSheet.com that I also get some of for sale by owner data from as well. FISBOHotSheet.com. Um, I'm averaging 105 dials an hour. You average what? 105 dials an hour. Oh, 105 dials an hour. Perfect. I knew you had that number. Um, okay, amazing. Okay, so Vulcan 7, that's a paid service. Is FISBOHotSheet.com a paid service? It's really cheap. It's only 75 bucks a quarter. Okay. How accurate do you find the information on those two lists? Extremely accurate. You know, I, find, I, extremely, I wouldn't be using them if they weren't. So extremely accurate data. Do they uh, filter through the do not call list? Yes, they do. And um, do you find these are mostly landlines or cell phones? Oh, both. I mean, with the expireds that Vulcan 7 winds up getting an obscene amount of data from people, they'll typically get two to five phone numbers of, of different uh, whoever the contacts are. And then Fisbo Hot Sheet will give you usually whatever phone number is listed on that ad. Okay, perfect. Okay, so you throw these lists into your dialer. Your dialer goes to work. I've seen you do your your Facebook Lives and stuff. It's really cool. So then once you get a live person on the phone – that's when you jump on and go into um, script mode. So scripts, are you mm -hmm. using um, any kind of specific scripts for these? Yeah, I, I create all my own scripts. So the answer is yes. Oh, you create all your own. Did yeah. you start off that way or did you use some other ones in the beginning? Um, I started using other ones. Uh, you know, I kind of went between, you know, Mike Ferry, Kevin Ward, you know, stuff like that, you know, some bold scripts, you know, I, like all over the place until I really started tweaking them to myself. And, you know, I found that I took this from here, this from here, and I like this line that I once said, and I made my own scripts. So, Perfect. Um, are those scripts part of your uh, program that you 
Okay. Yeah, the expired mastery program uh, for sale by owner. I really don't have it written down on that one, but my expired script is pretty killer. And you got, I mean, I do that on Facebook Live all the time. So, okay, cool. Um, I have an idea on that. I'll message you after the <laughs> after the fact. Okay, cool. I love, I love, I love scripts. Even though I'm not a cold caller, I love, I love to. Um, scripts is one of the most popular Google searches for real estate agent businesses. Did you know that? I had no idea. Yeah, it is really good to know. <laughs> Somebody like you can really take advantage of that. All right. So, okay. So you're making these calls. Um, what do you think that somebody, somebody just starting off on this, what is the goal of the call? So they get somebody live on the phone. Obviously the goal is the appointment, but are you going right into, Hey, I hear your house is expired. I'd like to list it. How does that kind of go? Oh, it's pretty simple. First off, I think when people are starting brand new, and this is kind of a side note here, is they should really focus on time that they're on the dialer for. So in a perfect world, every brand new agent should be on for like three hours. You don't focus so much on context because you're not going to be very good at the beginning, yet you can count on the amount of time that you're actually making the phone calls for. So, Why, is that, why does that matter? If, if they're not reaching anybody, why, why is the focus three hours on the dialer? It's, it's doing the activity. You know, and it's just doing, getting ready, to, or not saying getting ready, it's actually doing the activity upon activity upon activity because you got to get used to in the habit of doing it on a regular, consistent basis because you don't have to be the best person making the phone calls. You just have to be the most consistent person doing it. And consistency will lead to leads, I guess is the best way you could put it, and they'll lead to money. You know, I may not be the best person there, but I'll tell you right now, I'll consistently beat anybody else out there. Oh, I love that. That's that's basically what you're saying is focus on the system, not the goal. Although yep. we're all we all in have the beginning. Set goals. Yeah. In the be right. in the beginning, because you know, you can't control how many people are gonna pick up the phone every day. That's out of your control completely. Okay. Yet you can control the amount of hours that you're doing it for. And if you have time, for example, like I've only hit ten contacts today because I was only on the phone for two hours, I'll pick up for another hour and see if I can rip through those this afternoon. Okay. Is there a best time of day to call? I'm going to come back to your script, but is there a best time of day to call? Do you find? Eight o'clock in, in the morning is the best time for me. Monday through Friday, you're doing calls? Monday, Monday through Friday. Eight, eight, eight to 11 is when I make the phone calls. Okay. If you miss an hour and you come back and shoot it later, does it matter? Do you have a time that you like to do then? Is it like after work hours or... <laughs> The thing for me is I have, a, I have a young family. I got a six-year-old and three-year-old twins. So I like to like keep in mind with all the work I do, I'm home every day by like four o'clock. So th the reason that I call first thing in the morning is because it's the most convenient time for me because it's I'm in the office, I'm ready to go, I got energy, and I don't care when the best time to call is. All that matters is you're going to do it and what's the best time for you. You know, it's so funny to hear you say that because I interviewed Robin Mann a few weeks ago on door knocking and she said the exact same thing. I asked her if there was a particular time and she said, you know what, whatever time's the best time for me to do it is just being there and actually doing it. So there's a common thread there. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So let's let's so you're calling an expired. And like you said, originally, the goal is just make sure you're putting in the time. And you're there in th three hours. So somebody answers the phone now and you've got an expired. What What's kind of your approach? Yeah, uh, first, uh, Lori? Yes. Okay, so what I reason I ask a person by their first name is because that's the way a friend's going to answer the phone. So what I found is if you say, I'm looking for the owner of, or you say, hello, is this Jim? Then they're going to kind of wonder who you are calling, and it sounds much more business related that way. So be like, Lori, it's, um, hi, hi, Lori. That is so smart. Yes, hi. Lori, hi, it's um, Aaron. I'm a local realtor. I don't use my last name and I don't use Keller Williams because too many Keller Williams agents call. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm the local realtor. Um, as you're probably aware, your property came off the market last night. Did you sell that property privately or do you have it up for sale by owner? I, I, I was listed with an agent. Got it. So you're listed with an agent for it. God. Now, the reason you asked that question is because it's a real pattern interrupter because no one's asking that question and it really throws them off their game. Repeat then that question. What was the, how did the question go again? Is the property up for sale privately? I'm sorry. Is the pro <laughs> I can't even talk. Um, did you sell that property by owner or is it up for sale privately? Yeah, that's, that's interesting because it did. I had to stop and process because if we're doing an expired, it would have just, yeah, that's great. Okay. So now I tell you that it was listed with an agent. Got it. So I'm trying to figure out how in the world did that place not sell? Uh, the real estate agent didn't market it correctly.
Got it. So you had poor marketing. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. So what, what happened? Well, there weren't very many open houses and it didn't seem like we got very many showings. So, and you know, I've kind of call, called the real estate agent several times to see what was happening with it. And they told me it was in the MLS, but I, I really didn't see much else after beyond that. Got it. Now, are you living in the property or is it vacant? It's I'm living in it. You're living in it because the reason I say if it's vacant is because I'm not getting off the phone without that appointment. If it's vacant, then I'll be like, okay, well, what my team actually does is we specialize in selling homes around the market for extended periods of time without selling. I've taken homes around the market for as long as 1,039 days and flipped them around in an average of 29. Um, I'd love to stop by and have a conversation. What works better for you, late morning, early afternoon, or Saturday? I got to call my husband first. I'm not, he can call you back. Sure, sure. So, so you want to talk with your husband first? Yeah. All right. When do you think you'd have an opportunity to speak with him? Probably tonight after work. Okay. So why don't we do this? Why don't we t get a tentative appointment down on the schedule? Um, and that way you can chat with your husband. We can firm it up to make sure the time doesn't, you know, get booked by somebody else. So what works better, late morning, early afternoon, or Saturday? <laughs> okay. That's good. All right. So now we booked the appointment. So I like what you said, going back a second, I like what you said about the, um, the vacant. So you, you paused there and said, I'm asking that question because if, if they're in the house, I'm not missing the appointment. No, if the house is vacant and it's yeah. expired, it's like a slam dunk right there. Oh, gotcha. Because it, it should have sold. I noticed you also did not respond. You acknowledged the fact that I said it was the real estate agent that didn't do any marketing, but you didn't really respond to the fact that the real estate, you know, you didn't try to counteract that or prove your value or any of that kind of stuff. You went right into your next close for the appointment, which was, we, you know, we sell homes on average, blah, blah, blah. So you didn't address that. So does that mean no matter what objection I would have thrown out right there, that would have been your next line? Well, yeah, because what happens is people get so tied up in objection handling when the goal is not to handle objections. The goal is to three R is what I call it. Repeat, reaffirm, redirect with another question. So any objections that you give me, I'm just going to take it. I'm going to be like, all right, cool. I understand. And I'm going to repeat the, I'm going to repeat what you said. And I'm just going to do one of my objection handlers that just moves on to the next question. And then I'm going to ask my next question in the series of questions that I have. I'm curious, have, do you, have you ever tracked like, well, you said, um, I guess you have it here. If if you talk to 20 contacts and one took, talks and one books the appointment, that would be your average conversion rate then, right? For yeah. converting to an appointment. Okay, great. Um, okay, how about for sale by owner? So I'm a for sale by owner and you're calling me. You know, with for sale by owners, I don't have a full firm script really really rational, I would say we're not rationalized. I don't have a firm script that's set up. The main goal of a of the of the for sale by owners is to find out information and just dig a little bit and keep in touch with them on a regular basis. So it's more of like a long term nurture on um on a on a for sale by owner. So I'll call and I'll be like, hi, I'm looking for uh this one you usually don't have first names. I'm looking for the owner of one two three Smith Street. Okay. And then I'll be like I'm looking for the owner of one two three Smith Street. Mm -hmm. Um I, my name Hi, my name is Aaron. I'm a local realtor. I just want to assure you that I, I'm sorry. I, I say I'm a local realtor. I just wanted to get that out of the way right off the bat. And I'm just curious, how's everything going for in the process so far? I'm not listing with an agent. <laughs> totally, totally respect that. Totally respect that. My intention isn't to help you list the property, just to kind of stay in touch with you. Everything's going. Now, I never use the I have a buyer script or anything like that. So what I'll do, depending on what it is, I'll just dig and I'll be like, so, um, so got it. So are you planning on staying in the area? Uh, no, I'm. We're we're going to be moving to a nearby yeah. smaller town. And what what type of time frame in a perfect world would you like to be out of the home by? Well, in a perfect world, it would be yesterday, but we're no, we don't have any specific reason we need need to move fast. Got it. Okay. So what my team actually does is we specialize in helping for sale by owners that have their house in the market for, you know, for, for whatever period of time. Because what I found is that is, is who can net you more money. All right. So the question is, if I can net you the same amount of money that you could for your property, would you be open to sitting down and having a conversation? Sure. If you can show me how I make more money. Okay. So let's say this, hypothetically speaking, all right, let, let's say that you wanted a million dollars for your property. All right. And I found somebody that's willing to pay the million dollars and I charge you another million dollars. All right. So therefore we're at $2 million and I could find some idiot to pay you the $2 million for your property. You're still netting the million. I make a million and we could even split the difference. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, sure. 
see, I usually do one dollar in a million. I just messed it up right there. That's okay. <laughs> so That's all right. I got I got so, give it. So the con the concept is simply showing that because we all know that the biggest objection with for sale by owners is that they're trying to save the commission. And exactly. so you're going right into if we can if this doesn't cost you any more and I can show you how you'll make what you want to make. Of course that and then yeah. And then the reality of it is, is that I'm never locking down an appointment right there in that first week. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow up with a week. Lori, hey, it's Aaron Wittenstein over Keller Williams Real Estate. How are you? Great. Just wanted to catch up on the property. Sure, everything's going. And then by, you know, you just do the same thing on the next phone call and the same thing on the next phone call. And then by like the third phone call, they get to know you a little bit. And then you can sense their frustration as you go. So it's almost just staying in touch, staying in touch, staying in touch, staying in touch. Because most for like 80% of for sale by owners will list within six weeks of putting the property in the market themselves. I I heard that it, I was at the uh, Kelly Williams family reunion convention and um, Jackie Kravitz was doing a, a presentation. And I'll tell you, when I heard that stat, I, I forget what she said, if it was uh, they list in the first 90 days or something similar to what you said. I was yeah. blown away. I'm like, I need to go start chasing for sale by owners. <laughs> I'm not They're great. It's just, it's just people don't want to stay in the long haul for it. They want to like the one and done, one and done, one and done. And it just doesn't work that way. Yeah. So expireds, you're going right for the appointment and for sale by owners or more of a nurture trying to build trust and relationship through through follow up calls. Exactly. Which one do you find the most success with? I would imagine there's a lot more expired than for sale by owners, right? Um, expires. I had massive success with last year. This year, we've been having a lot more success with for sale by owners, um, just because a lot of the, there's not a lot of expires. That's what we've been challenged with, and a lot of them are just relisting with the same agent, which I just don't understand logically in my head whatsoever. So I've been shifting a lot of my work to for sale by owners. We actually went back two years on old for sale by owners to get um some really old stuff, which has been working out really well so far. Oh, I love that. We're the same way with internet leads. Some of our best. Um, uh, uh, the best opportunity is to go back through web leads that are two years old and start calling them. And because, the, you know, just like for sell by owners, if they didn't sell and they decide to sit on it, you know, you've got a year of this cultivation time or two that go before they put it back on the market or with a, with a internet lead before they're qualified or have their credit approved. So I love going back through old leads. I think that's, that's really smart. If they didn't sell, right. You've got a, you've got a gold mine. Well, no one else is touching them, too. That's why. I mean, they're not getting inundated. The brand new fizz for sale binders get killed, but the old ones really work well. Yeah, I love that. Do you ever back that up with any kind of direct mail or anything? Or are you strictly? Yeah. No, we have an eight by eight um, email campaign that we use, and we're actually implementing, as soon as the docs come in, we're going to be implementing a 10 uh, day blitz for expires. Uh, five, ma five mailers, uh, a, a mailer every other day for 10 days on top of an eight by eight um, expired mailing uh, email campaign. I love that. And I'd be fascinated to know what your results are after the fact. When I, when I was doing direct mail, let's see, it was 2000, 2007 to 2010, we were doing a ton of direct mail. And that's where I, I was getting a lot of my business from expired. And it was through direct mail. And that's exactly what I did. As soon as it expired, the first day I sent a card, like a full on greeting card. So there was a financial investment. But, you know, everybody's going to open a greeting card. It's that's not something yeah. to throw away. So I wanted to make sure that that landed. And then I set that up on a series to where it, it touched them seven times. Or actually, I think it went 10 or 12, but seven was my average. It took about seven. So if I was spending a buck a piece, it was like a $7 investment before I got that call. And But I didn't find over time that that was that it, it, it seemed like direct mail was waning. Um, but I think with your calls and piggybacking on that direct mail, I love that brand reinforcement and and trust. Oh, there he is again. Oh, there he is again. Right. And I'm just going to bomb them for 10 days. And I figure I'll give it a try. I bought enough for 500 houses. So we'll see how that goes. And I figure after 500, we're going to know if it works or not. So, yeah, I love that. I think that's, that's a really good idea. Um, what else? So anybody that's listening here in our last five minutes, what advice would you give somebody uh, you gave us great advice. That one, they just need to stay on. They just need to be there for their three hours and do their dials. What else might help them be more successful? Is it realizing you're not going to be very good for a long time? <laughs> because well, you're basically you're gonna suck is the best way to put it and you know what winds up happening with most people is like like i say you consistently dial for 15 hours a week so you talk to someone that's brand new and they'll be like i cold calling is not for me and i'll be like interesting why is that and they're like because it didn't didn't work last week i'll be like so let me get this straight you dialed for for a week right 
They're like, yeah, we dialed for a week. It didn't work. I'm like, so you dialed three hours a day, right? And be like, well, no, we did more like two hours a day. Okay, got it. So you cold call for 10 hours last week. And they'll be like, and I'll be like, how many times were you going to the bathroom? Did you stop to talk to somebody? Did you grab a glass? Or they're like, oh, well, you know, maybe half. All right, so let me get this straight. You you lead generated for five hours last week and you wonder why you suck. (laughs) So, I mean, what winds up happening is people start off really bad. They just suck. Then they kind of suck. Then they just suck. Then they're like (laughs) way below average. Then they're below average. And then they're just average. And they may never become better than average. But as long as you're doing the consistent work day in and day out, you will completely average your way to success. I love it. You'll average your way to success. That's that's genius. Um, How do you handle the rejection? It's not you can't be rejected by someone that doesn't want to call you in the first place and somebody you that you're not even looking at face to face. The the way that I look at it, rejection is like back in my single days or something where, you know, you go out and someone says, I don't want to have anything to do with you. You're ugly. That's rejection. Rejection is like, you know, my wife telling me my I don't have any hair, but saying your hair looks horrible. You know, that's rejection. But these people, they never wanted to be called by you in the first place. So they don't know you. They've never seen you. So how can you be rejected by someone that you've never seen and doesn't want to hear from you ever? It's not rejection. Okay. Well, how, just, how about if, if I'm worried that I'm disrupting somebody's life? You are. I, yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, but here's the thing, though. Like the way you come at it is that I'm really good at my job. Like I'm really good. And I'm calling to help you out. Like you have this mindset, you know, that you're helping coming for contribution, whatever you want to say, is that if you have that mindset that these people are just normal people that are pissed, because if you think about it, your house just expired from the multiple listing service, all right? And you had an agent for six months that didn't do their job. And the next thing you know, you've got 37 million agents calling you. I would be pissed too. That's why you got to be the first one that makes the phone calls. So. I love it. Okay, so if anybody wants to send you a referral, um, do you have a team or is it just you? We actually, like last year was just me and my operations manager. So the transaction we did was just the two of us. Um, now I've got the two of us. We've got a virtual assistant. We've got a buyer specialist and just brought on a listing specialist last week. Woo, you're about to go through some growing pains. Yeah, I know. I'm looking forward to it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember that. Okay. Um, so they would, they would, um, I've got your number here, 914-406-6483. And I will put that in the, in the write up. You're Aaron at Westchester sales.com, Aaron Wittenstein, Westchester, New York. And, um, you told us the links to your, um, to your training program. So we will put those in there as well. Is there anything else I didn't ask you or any leaving thoughts for our audience? I just, you know, I think that is whether it's internet marketing, whether it's for sale by owners, whether it's expired, whether it's door knocking, whether it's database, whether it's whatever it is, just whatever you're going to do, take the time to figure out what that is and consistently do it. Spend, I'm Lori, I'm assuming that with your internet lead generation, this is something you're doing three hours plus a day, right? Like you're working it. Absolutely. So, so whatever it is, find something because if you're not going to find, you know, if you're not going to do it, don't waste your time and just leave the business because how do you expect to get, how do you expect to make any money or make any lead generation or do anything while you're sitting around with your, you know, your, I, I don't want to say what I'm going to say, <laughs> but you know, you're sitting around doing nothing. Well, how do you expect to have any results and how do you expect that money and how do you expect to feed your family? That's right. That's exactly right. And the best advice you could give anybody. All right. It's been a pleasure, Aaron. I really enjoyed our time together. And um, I'll message you about that other thought I had on on the scripts and I'll put this together and um, and hopefully I will run into you in real life again one of these days out there in the yeah. in the industry. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.